In this video, I will rank all the historical TV shows of 2021 that I have seen. I will rank them in tiers, in 5 tiers. So what should we call the highest tier? Well, I'm just putting a heart here, because these were the TV shows that I absolutely loved, very, very much. And I highly recommend them, really, to anyone. Then let's call the next tier very good. I liked these series too, very much. Not as much as the ones in the highest tier, but very much. And of course, I still recommend them to anyone. The next one will be decent. These were also good. I enjoyed watching them, but nothing special. If they have more seasons in the future, I will probably watch them too. I don't know. But this tier still includes good TV series. I, I have to say that. Then we have those shows that, in my opinion, could have been better. I had no major problems with them. It is just that I expected better. I couldn't call them bad. It's just, yeah, I expected better. But the last one. Now, these... I consider them a waste of time, completely. And a waste of money, if you had to pay for it specifically. For example, you had to subscribe to a new streaming service for it or, or something like that. I didn't like these at all. And I, I can't say that I recommend them to anyone. Now, let's see the TV shows we have here. In alphabetical order, the first one is Anne Boleyn. This miniseries is about the last five months of Anne Boleyn's life. It was promoted as a psychological thriller about how Anne's downfall comes to pass in the English court of Henry VIII. Now, there have been so many Tudor dramas focused on her, with so many iconic Anne portrayals that if you want to create a new drama about her, that has to be very, very good to be even worth mentioning. And this series is not good. I just found it boring. There is nothing psychological or thriller about it. It is just boring. I think the script is bad, nonsensical, things happen. The dialogues are, are very badly written. The acting is bad as if it was a school play. Jodie Turner Smith seems to be the only one who was trying at least, but the others? I don't know. Though I must mention that the plot is actually quite accurate historically, but that is the only positive thing I can say. So, I think it is a waste of time. And sadly, this won't be the last series in this tier, but the next one will be higher, much higher. Atlantic Crossing, this is a Norwegian miniseries set in Norway and the United States during World War II. It is basically the Norwegian The Crown. It focuses on the royal family, specifically on Crown Princess Martha during the war. President Roosevelt is also a major character in the series. He is played by Kyle MacLachlan. Oh, I loved this series. The story is so engaging, so well written. The characters were so interesting, I absolutely loved it. One of the main reasons why this series is so interesting, in my opinion, is that it sheds light on a lesser known side of a very well known era. While there are countless World War II movies and TV series, this Norwegian perspective is a not really known and rarely portrayed part of the war. And the Norwegian royal family is also not a very widely known royal family. So I loved this series very, very much. And of course, I am putting it in the highest tier. Let's see the next one. Charité Season 3. So, Charité is a German TV series set in Berlin's Charité Hospital, focusing on the lives and works of famous German doctors. The first season portrayed the 1880s, the second season World War II, and the third season is set in 1961. It centers around how the construction of the Berlin Wall affects the life of the people in Berlin and how it changes everything in Charité as well. To be honest, 
It was not a bad season, but to me season 1 and season 2 were so much better. So I had high expectations for season 3 and it didn't make them. The story and the characters were much less interesting to me. It was not bad or boring, just not as good as I expected due to the previous seasons. So. If you are looking for a good German historical series, I would still recommend all three seasons of Charité, but I think season 3 could have been better. Then we have Domina. It is a British-Italian TV series about the life and rise of Livia Drusilla, the powerful wife of the Roman Emperor Augustus. I really enjoyed this series and I hope there will be a second season because there are still so many things to show from Livia's life and the next generation characters are so great that I would really like to watch a second season focused on them. Now the series has been criticized for not being historically accurate which is kind of true, but I still find it quite more accurate than other very successful TV shows set in the same era, like Rome and I Claudius. And I like that there is a production that finally focuses on Livia, and I think the main actress portrayed her very well. My only problem was with the other portrayal of Augustus, that was not the best. And there was a time jump and cast change after episode 2, which I didn't like so much because I liked the young cast. There was such good chemistry between them, I would have liked to watch at least one more episode with them. Also, I think the time jump was at a weird point because it made the story skip very interesting and important events, so I don't know why the writer chose this way. But I still like the series very much, so I'm putting it in not the highest tier, but just below that. Let's continue with El Cid Season 2. El Cid is a Spanish TV show by the legendary medieval Spanish hero Rodrigo Diaz de Rivar. Season 2 picks up directly after the season 1 finale, so right after the death of Ferdinand the Great. Season 2 is basically about the fight for power between his children. I think season 2 was a bit of an improvement from season 1. These sibling conflicts were very exciting, it gave me Game of Thrones vibes. The action and the battle scenes were also great. My major problem is that the protagonist's own story doesn't progress much during the whole season and it is supposed to be his story, isn't it? Also, I find these 5 episode long seasons a bad idea. I think these two seasons should have been one season with 10 episodes instead, but five episodes are too short. The story they can contain is not enough for a whole season, but I did enjoy this one as well, so I am putting it in decent. The next one is Leonardo. It is a TV series about Leonardo da Vinci, it is a cooperation between many countries, Italy, France, Spain, the United States and the United Kingdom. The series recounts Leonardo's extraordinary life through the works that made him famous and through the stories hidden within those works. This whole thing is mixed with a murder mystery that spans through the whole season. Since I love murder mysteries, this did not bother me, I really enjoyed this mixture, but I can also understand if some disliked the series because of this. Another thing I've heard people complain about was that Leonardo is not extraordinary enough in the series, he's not charismatic and special enough to seem like the real Leonardo da Vinci. I can agree with this in some measure, I kind of expected more from Aiden Turner as Leonardo, but all in all I enjoyed this series, season 2 has been announced and I'm looking forward to it. So this also goes into the decent category. And now, my absolute favorite from 2021, Red Sleeve. It is a Korean TV series, K-dramas did steal this year, didn't they? It tells the love story of a crown prince, Di San, and the court lady, Song Do Kim. The series quickly became a big hit in South Korea, it has swept awards in every category. And I really understand why. It is so perfect in every sense. 
Okay, I could talk about this for hours, but I will try to summarize what I love about this show. The story is so engaging, the characters are so interesting and multi-layered, even the supporting characters, all the actors are great, the main characters have perfect chemistry. And it is not just the love story that is very engaging, it is also the power games in the royal court, the dysfunctional royal family, the court lady's life in the palace. I've become so invested in this show, it is now my favorite Korean drama. I like it even more than Empress Ki. And I should probably remake my top 15 favorite historical TV shows video, because I'm pretty sure that Red Steep belongs in the top 15 now. So, of course, it goes into the top tier. Oh, and I have to mention that this royal love story is not fictional, it was true. These two did have a very romantic love story in real life. The next one is another Korean drama, River Where the Moon Rises. It is set in the 6th century Kingdom of Goryeo and it is about Princess Wang Yang and General Onda. It is based on a classic Korean folktale, but the two main characters are real historical figures as well. Now, I kind of enjoyed this show as well, although it was not really my cup of tea. I think 20 episodes were too much for this story. Sometimes it went too slow for me. I think 10 episodes would have been enough for so much story. It also gave me like fairy tale vibes and I often had the feeling that I was watching a children's film, which is no surprise I guess when a story is based on a folk tale, but it was just not what I personally expect from a historical drama. Nevertheless, I enjoyed the series, especially the supporting character storylines, but I did not like the ending at all. It was so... I just didn't like it. So it kind of ruined the whole experience. So if the ending was different, I would probably put this in decent, but with this ending, it belongs to could have been better to me. Romulus is an Italian TV series set in 8th century BC about the foundation of the ancient city of Rome. Originally, the characters speak in archaic Latin in this TV series, which makes it all very unique. So I would recommend watching this with subtitles, even if you also find it in a dubbed version in your language, because the archaic Latin contributes a lot to the whole vibe of the show. The plot resembles a Shakespearean history with treacherous relatives, young princes seeking revenge, etc. I must admit that I got absolutely captivated by this show. I am really not a binge-watching person, but I binged this show in two days. I can't really explain what got me so invested in this TV series. I know it is not perfect or very special, but for some reason it got me so interested in the plot that it made me binge watch it. The series was quite successful actually, it has been renewed for a second season. So I am putting it in the very good tier. Sissi is a German-Austrian TV series about Elisabeth of Bavaria, Empress of Austria. It focuses on Sissi's romance with her husband, Emperor Franz Josef, and her early years as Empress. Okay, I cannot express how much I disliked this series. There is not a single thing that I liked about it. Historical inaccuracy at its worst, nonsense plot full of plot holes, bad script, bad characters, it was bad and boring. I could rant about it for hours. I really can't recommend it to anyone. If you want to watch good movies about Sissy, watch the Romy Schneider movies. If you want to watch something quite close to her real story and the real history of Europe in the 1850s and 1860s, watch the 2009 miniseries. I honestly see no reason to watch this 2021 garbage. It is a complete waste of time. I have no idea why it was renewed for second season even before the premiere of season 1. I must add though that I watched Sissy and Red Sleeve at the same time, almost, and the two series have several parallels, but Red Sleeve is just so much better in every way, it's perfection. And the contrast between the two series must have made me find Sissy a bit worse than I would have found it without Red Sleeve, I don't know. 
What else is left here? The Great Season 2. The Great is a satirical comedic drama loosely based on the life of Catherine the Great. Season 2 starts right after Catherine's successful coup as the heavily pregnant Empress is hunting down her deposed husband. I think those who liked season 1 and like this satiric kind of humor the series has will enjoy this season as well. But those who don't like this humor will not enjoy this season either because not much has changed in that regard. Personally, I found season 2 better than the previous season. I really enjoyed watching how Catherine starts her rule full of ideas and how those get destroyed by reality again and again. But I didn't really like the direction the story goes in in the last couple of episodes. I think it was pure fan service, not a consequential writing decision. It was just to serve the fans of a certain character and I know they did it because that character has many fans, but I am not one of them, so I didn't like it. I also don't know how they will continue the story from here in the third season that has been recently announced, so for this reason I can't put the show into a higher tier than decent. The next one is The Great Seljuks. It is a Turkish TV show. It is set in the Seljuk Empire in the 11th century during the reign of Sultan Malik Shah. The story is about Malik Shah and his son Ahmed Sanjar. It was a big hit in Turkey and it has got a prequel which is running since November. It has very high production values and it is a very good series, I think. I really liked the way it introduced the world of the Seljuk Empire to the viewers. I think it is a very underrated empire in history. Interesting characters and storyline, beautiful sets and costumes. Although I have to mention that the enemies of the Seljuks are portrayed as these mustache twirling cartoon villains, which is a very outdated concept, let's put it this way. Also, if you don't have a lot of free time to watch TV shows, this is probably not your show because it has 34 episodes and one episode is about 150 minutes long. It did not become my favorite Turkish historical drama because I liked the Magnificent Century series better, but I enjoyed it and I am putting it in very good. There are two TV series left which I haven't talked about. These are a bit different from the ones we have had so far because these are docudramas on Netflix, so a mixture of documentary and historical drama. But my same video from last year also included the Netflix docudrama Rise of Empires Ottoman, so I've brought these two from 2021 here as well. The first one is the Age of Samurai Battle for Japan. It takes place in feudal Japan from 1551 to 1616 and it is about several powerful warlords who clash to unify Japan. I think the original concept was very good, this uh, era and these power struggles seem a very interesting subject for TV series and I enjoyed this series. My only problem was that there were so many things going on so rapidly that I think this story should have been told in much more episodes because for only 6 episodes it felt very hasty and too complicated. So I think I should put this into the decent tier. And last but not least, The Lost Pirate Kingdom, which is also a Netflix docudrama. It portrays the rise and fall of the early 18th century pirate republic based in Nassau, the real pirates of the Caribbean, as it were. I liked this drama very, very much. It made me so invested in this um, Caribbean pirate world. It made me research a lot about these characters. It also made me restart the TV show Black Sails, which I started 5 years ago, but I quickly dropped it because I lost interest. But The Lost Pirate Kingdom renewed my interest in that series as well. I hope very much that Netflix will continue producing these docudramas because I always find them quite good. So I am putting this last series of 2021 into very good tier. 
So that means we have most of the historical series of last year in the decent or very good category. So I rate it as a not bad year for historical dramas, but there is always room for improvement. And next time I will come back with the historical movies of 2021.